Hello, as the title suggests, what we're going to learn in this short video is how we can translate easily between PSL and SVA, as long as we know one of them. First, a history lesson. Um, PSL has been around for many years. It was developed by IBM and it went under the name Sugar. And it was actually standardised as an IEEE standard, i.e. an industry-wide standard, in 2005 for the first time. The same year that the PSL IEEE standard was released, System Verilog was released, there was actually an alignment committee to ensure that when the System Verilog assertions language was being developed that it was as similar as possible to PSL. Let's start then with a simple PSL property. This is PSL that's embedded in the source code file so this comment character is required. Every tool, not just the Cadence tools, require this hash hash PSL to understand that the comment that follows is a PSL statement. If I were to split the statement over multiple lines all of them have to be commented but I only say PSL once at the beginning of the statement so that's how I would code that. So what this property describes is the definition of a property with this name. Okay, and I say is always. And then what's in here is a Boolean expression. And you'll notice that the Boolean expression is actually a VHDL expression. And this clocking expression here is also a VHDL clocking expression. So the first thing to realize about PSL is it has what's called flavors. So Boolean expressions can be expressed in either VHDL or Verilog or other languages as well, which we won't discuss right now. So the first thing we want to do if we're converting PSL into SVA is probably convert this into a, a Verilog Boolean expression instead. So a logical OR operator for there. And instead of saying at rising edge, which is a VHDL function call, we would say at pos edge, which is how we describe that in Verilog. Okay, so that's the definition of a property. Nothing has been instanced yet. So the way in which we instance it is again with slash slash PSL there to inform the, the compiler that it's a PSL statement. That's the label of the instance, the name of the instance, and we say assert. Okay, so this is a verification directive. Say take this property that we've already defined and prove it's always true under all circumstances. Now if we were to do the same thing in uh, SVA, it's remarkably similar. So here's the definition of our property. Okay, we've got the keywords property and then the property here. And we've got the clocking expression, the first thing we define here at negage clock. And we've got this other thing here, disable IFF. We'll talk about that in a second. And the Boolean expression, of course, is the same because it's just a Verilog Boolean expression or system Verilog logical expression. Um, so the one thing to bear in mind about properties, the properties come from the world of formal. And in formal, there is only a truth or false. So any expression you give essentially boils down to a Boolean expression. Is this property always true or is there a violation of that property, which we would call a counterexample? Uh, if you're describing sequential properties, all you're doing is describing a sequence, which is a series of Boolean expressions over a number of cycles. So everything's a Boolean in properties, whether it be SVA or PSL. So that's easy. Once we go from this step of converting the PSL, if it's for VHDL flavor into Verilog, translation's fairly simple. We just put the clocking expression here. In fact, let's make that the same, pause edge, um, and the Boolean expression repeated here. Now this disable clause here, disable IFF, IFF means if and only if. So if this expression in this parentheses is true, then that cancels the requirement for that property to be true. And the way in which we do that in PSL is by using the abort operator. So I have my property, and then I say abort, and then give. So CR, that's just a signal, so it's just a Boolean expression there. So I'm aborting the requirement for that uh, property if the expression CLR is true. Yeah, so what we see here is two direct equivalents. And you'll notice in this case we've described the, the SVA property separately from the actual instantiation of it. So here we say assert property in just instead of just saying assert. And we never said always. So that's a key difference there. So for those properties I could have specified them in the same line. I actually declare them and give the verification directive. So instead of doing that I could have said assert always and then copy that expression. And likewise I could have done the same thing for this SVA property. So actually doing it in two stages like that, the declaration then the instantiation with the verification directive is the most flexible and reusable way. But for the time being, we'll just simplify what we're trying to describe by doing it like this. In fact, we're missing a closing bracket on the end there. Rather than have to keep typing out the clocking expression for the properties, we can define a default clock. And that default clock only applies to the scope in which you define it, not the whole design. So for PSL, I would do it like this. And for SVA, I would do it like this.
Actually, we need to change the name of that signal to CLK in both cases. And now we can remove this from the properties themselves because we now have a default clock. Now we'll remove the aborts and the disable IFFs just to make things a bit easier to comprehend for the rest of the description. So we'll remove that part there. And now what we'll describe is some properties using sequences. So let's have a... So this describes a sequence of A followed by B implies on the next cycle we have the sequence C followed by D. So notice in PSL the sequences are called serres and they're wrapped in the curly brackets. If the curly brackets weren't there this would be a syntax error because this operator can only be used with serres. To do the same thing in system Verilog assertions. So the difference between the two then is in PSL for a sequence we have to wrap it in curly brackets and the one cycle separator is a semicolon. In SVA we don't need these curly brackets and the one cycle separator is hash hash one. If we wanted the same cycle implication instead of next cycle implication the operators mean the same thing in both languages. We can define sequences in order that we can reuse them multiple times later. So in PSL the description is shown like this. And for SVA, the equivalent sequence is shown like this. So what we can do then is inside of our properties, we can replace everywhere we have the sequence A followed by B with its name. And likewise for SVA. All the sequence repetition operators are the same in SVA and PSL because they were made so by this alignment committee, I said so. So consecutive repetition four times, you do that in PSL on this in SVA. Ranges are defined the same way too. Those will be identical behaviours. And other kinds of repetition are the same, so like the non-consecutive repetition will be like this in both. Go to repetition will be like this. To demonstrate the sequence composition operators we've defined some new sequences here and we're using them in these properties. So there's the two sequences in PSL and the exact equivalents in SVA. And we're using them in the property here. So for the system relevant assertions one, we're using hash hash zero to do what's called a fusion. So what this means is this sequence here, the final cycle of that sequence and the first cycle of that sequence are in the same cycle, namely they overlap by one cycle. The colon operator is what we use in PSL. Notice now as well that although these are sequence names I still have to surround them in curly brackets because I'm using these sequence composition operators. So if I want to do an AND which means these two sequences must start in the same cycle but do not necessarily need to end in the same cycle I use the keyword AND in system Verilog and I use the ampersand operator so this is is the same character as the Verilog operator but this is a sequence composition operator that's why I've got to have these curly brackets. Length matching is those two sequences have to both occur and be of the same length and in system Verilog assertions I use intersect to do that. Also notice the covers, we've applied covers to these sequences so I just use the uh, a label here for the PSL, the verification directive cover then the name of the sequence I wish to cover and in SVA I have a label say cover property and then give the name of the sequence I wish to cover which must be in round brackets a requirement of the syntax. And a final thing, if I wish the property to be triggered upon the rise of J rather than its level, I can use the built-in function rows. Okay, so there's many different built-in functions in PSL and they have the same names as system Verilog. So in system Verilog it's actually a system call. So again these two properties are equivalent. So all the names for the SVA and the PSL built-in functions are the same. The only exception is for this dollar pass okay it's called prev in PSL so that's the only difference in built-in functions name so I would also have to equate this to some value because that will return the previous value of J so I would need to do that if we wanted to modify these sequences in order that we add an upper bound of infinity so this is a potentially infinite length sequence here I do this in PSL by using inf that's predefining the language and I do that in SVA by putting dollar. That means infinity. Okay, there's also shorthand repetition as well. If I say zero to infinity, I can replace that with just the star. 
and I can replace one to infinity with plus symbol. You notice here how it's exactly the same in both PSL and SV8. Okay, so that concludes the quick intro on converting SVA to PSL and vice versa. It runs slightly over time, but hopefully you still find it useful. Thanks for listening.